Staying on top of repotting your pothos is crucial to ensure the continued health and vitality of the plant. As pothos grow, their root systems expand, seeking out more space and nutrients. If left in an undersized pot for too long, the roots can become root-bound, which inhibits the growth and leads to a decline in overall health of the plant. Repotting at the right time allows the plant to thrive by providing it with ample room for root expansion, fresh nutrient-rich soil, and improved drainage. Regular repotting also prevents the plant from becoming stressed or cramped, results in fuller foliage, better growth, and a more visually appealing indoor display. So by staying attentive to the signs and repotting when needed, you're giving your pothos the best chance to flourish and beautify your living space. In this Houseplant Care 101 episode, brought to you by repotme.com, today we're diving into the art of pothos repotting. I'll be covering everything from using moss poles, repotting a trailing pothos, to transitioning a water-rooted pothos to soil. This Houseplant Care 101 series is sponsored by RepotMe.com. With RepotMe, you can have all of your houseplant supplies delivered right to your door. They are a one-stop shop for all of your houseplant, orchid, or succulent needs. They have custom handmade houseplant soils ranging from tropical houseplants, cactus and succulents, pothos, snake plants, and more. I cannot live without their clear slotted orchid pots. They have amazing houseplant fertilizers and so much more. I've included their link in my description below and you can get 10% off any soil with my code Ashley. So let's begin with the exciting world of moss pole repotting. You could use a plank or a stake or a trellis. In this repotting, I'll be using a moss pole. And did you know that pothos epiphytic nature allows them to grow on other plants in their natural habitat? So moss poles and planks actually simulate this natural behavior. And as a result, it promotes healthier, lusher foliage. The leaves can become huge and moss poles are fantastic for encouraging this vertical growth growth, creating that lush jungle vibes. And since they're natural climbers in their native environment, you know, using that moss pole provides the pothos with that vertical structure to climb. This not only looks visually appealing, but it maximizes the use of vertical space in your home. So I recommend repotting during the growing season. Anytime spring or summer when your pothos is actively growing is perfect. I'm really glad that I decided to repot this neon pothos for this video because when I started to take the soil out of the nursery pot, I realized that there was a lot of soil compared to roots and a lot of times the soil that these plants are potted up with at the growers and at the nursery isn't especially well draining. So I was really glad to get rid of the old soil and pot it up in one of my favorite clear slotted nursery pots so I could keep an eye on the roots, keep an eye on the moisture, and also know it's extremely well draining. One that accommodates not just the plant, but also the moss pole or plank and has room for the roots to spread. I still would err on the side of caution on going too large. So one to two inches larger than the original pot should be large enough as you don't want there to be too much soil compared to roots in the pot. The more time that that plant spends on growing roots to fill up the pot, the less time it's going to be spending on growing big, beautiful leaves. So gently remove your pothos from its current pot, keeping its root ball intact. Make sure they look healthy, there's no root rot. Trim off any dead roots if you see them or you know mushy roots. And then if you need to, you can gently loosen them, which will encourage outward growth and kind of get rid of any really loose excess soil. And then position the pothos near the moss pole, making sure it's well supported and centered and place the moss pole into the pot center ensuring it's stable and secure. I'm actually putting the moss pole kind of towards the back of the pot here. So wherever you want to place the moss pole is fine. And then fill the pot with a well draining mix, allowing the moss pole to extend above the soil. I'm using on all of my plants today, the customized pothos soil from Repot Me. As you all know, I'm obsessed with their soils. They have tons of customized ones. And today I'm using the one that's specifically made for pothos. Um, it has everything that it needs. So you can make your own soil if you want. I would recommend staying away from just a standard potting mix uh, because that can retain too much water and cause root rot. 
So you wanna maybe tap the pot, get the soil where it needs to be. So gently press the soil, secure the plant, secure the moss pole, and then give it a good watering that will allow the soil to settle and it will also hydrate the roots. Next up, we're going to repot a trailing or vining pothos. So trailing pothos vines add a touch of elegance and natural beauty to any indoor space. They're so beautiful and lovely and the lush foliage and kind of gracefully draping vines create what I think is a visually, very visually pleasing and calming atmosphere. And I love that they're living decor elements. So whether they're hanging in a macrame hanger or kind of cascading down shelves, they really bring life and vibrancy to otherwise what could be considered empty spaces. Now they can become quite leggy if they are left unchecked. So repotting helps restore their lushness. So one of the things you can do if needed is start by trimming off any long or leggy vines. This encourages the plant to grow bushier and more compact as it focuses on new growth. So as you can see on this Pothos Enjoy that it's actually pretty root bound compared to the neon Pothos that I just repotted that had a lot of excess soil. So I will go one to two sizes larger on the pot for this one as opposed to the neon Pothos where I stayed with a smaller sized pot. I did my best to gently kind of tickle the roots to get rid of some of the soil to loosen up those roots, but I'm careful not to disturb the roots too much. You could use chopsticks or some sort of tool to try to remove some of the excess soil. Sometimes I err more on the side of caution instead of tearing the roots out of the soil. I just kind of leave some of that excess soil that's difficult to remove. Again, choose a pot that's slightly larger than the current one, providing room for the roots and growth with lots of drainage holes, and position your pothos in the center, and then fill it with your well-draining pothos soil. Sometimes the top of these vining pothos become really sparse, so an easy trick to fill the pot out and make it more lush is to take one of the vines and place the nodes into the soil, and then use bobby pins to push the nodes into the soil and keep them in place. Giving your pothos a good watering will help it settle in. And remember on all of these plants, don't forget to avoid direct sunlight after repotting. So lastly, let's talk about transitioning a water-rooted pothos to soil. It could be a cutting, a propagation that has established a good root system in the water. You know, it's an exciting step in the propagation journey to transition it to soil. Now the switch to soil can provide that pothos with a nutrient-rich medium, which allows them to develop a robust root system and will help it sustain that vigorous growth. And if you decide to transition a water-grown pothos to soil, be sure to follow proper repotting techniques to minimize stress and encourage successful adaptation to the new growing medium. You could take your cuttings and plant it in a pot with existing pothos if you want to make the top bushier, or you can use it to create a new pothos plant. So start by removing your pothos cutting from its water-filled vessel and you can wash off those roots if you want to and choose a pot with drainage holes and fill it with your well-draining pothos soil. Again, you don't want a pot that's extremely large and way more soil than roots. So place your pothos cutting in that soil. Make sure the crown is slightly above the soil line. And when you're done repotting it, you know, making sure that the soil and the roots are all set up, water the cutting thoroughly, allowing the soil to settle around the roots. Now you want to only keep that soil lightly moist as your pothos adjusts to its new soil environment. Don't let it dry out completely for a while, just lightly moist. Keep in mind the transition from water to soil may cause some stress to the plants because it will have to grow soil roots when it's had up to this point water roots. So allow your pothos cutting some time to adapt gradually, adjusting to the new soil environment. Also hold off on fertilizing for a few weeks after repotting. This will give the cutting some time to settle and it minimizes the risk of fertilizer burn. It is common for pothos cuttings to drop a few leaves during the transition and adaptation to soil. So if you notice any yellowing or wilting leaves, you can trim them to redirect the plant's energy towards new growth. 
And there you have it, pothos repotting demystified. So whether you're using a moss pole, refreshing a trailing pothos, or transitioning a water-rooted cutting to soil, these steps will help your pothos to thrive and flourish. And if you're interested in plant care, I have many episodes in my Houseplant Care 101 series. I also film a lot of plant shopping and plant hauls always centered around houseplants. So subscribe to see those future episodes in your newsfeed. And we also have a great community on Instagram Instagram. Thanks again to Repot Me for sponsoring this series. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. You will definitely be seeing me soon. Bye. <laughs>